Today on Crackball, we have a cliff notes of Sony's state of play for August 6, 2020. Now this one is interesting because they had just shown a, a wonderful show for PS5. They made clear, Sony did, that we should not get excited for this. <laughs> We're going to be focused on PS4. They're going to be 40 minutes, going to show some games, but there's not going to be any PS5 reveals or big reveals or anything like that. Maybe a few updates on games. So they really downplayed the excitement for this itty. But I don't think it worked because people were still expecting more than what they got. People want PS5 news. Yes, they do. And we, we got a little bit, but not as much as people wanted. But how did this state of play work for you? Well, they started out real strong with Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time. They showed really fun gameplay mechanic. They showed off their quantum mask. I think that they said there's going to be four. They only revealed three of the four. Um, there's going to be skins in the game. There's an inverted mode. And... And Dingo Dial. They show Dingo Dial. Would you call me? I called you Dingo Dial. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say Dingo Dial as many times I, as, I, I, as I, I can. I know. So they did. They did. They did show it off. The Coco can play all the levels that Crash plays. They have specific levels for Cortex and now mm -hmm. Dingo Dial. And so they really did a good job of showing they why sure Crash did. matters in 2020. And it looked awesome. It looked great. The uh, art style. It was very good. colorful. Well, and Crash has always been colorful. Yes, it is. So yes. they did a great job. Looked it great. looks like Crash. It looks like a lot of Crash. <laughs> and so we'll see how that goes October 2nd, 2020. Then they rolled into Hitman 3. I wondered what they were going to show, and they splashed up VR support. Which I was like, woo. That's not uh, something I'm super interested in from a VR standpoint, but anyone who has VR, they basically said mm -hmm. apparently the entire trilogy is going to be played in, playable in VR. Right. I think the snippet that they showed, if that's really what the gameplay is throughout the entire game, that that's pretty good for VR. Well, Hitman is a game that a lot of people like to mess around in to do crazy mm -hmm. stuff. If you're doing it in VR, it's probably going to be even more interesting. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's in January of 2021. Then they rolled right into Braid, Anniversary Edition. So not Braid mm -hmm. 2. It is a remaster, essentially. Yeah. Just looks a lot better, updated. Yeah. Lots of pixels per pixel from nine the... pixels for each pixel. old pixel. Each I don't know. Pixel. I, I I know that they <laughs> got to get their pixel measuring stick out, but I really didn't <laughs> care that much. I mean, it looked great. It was fine. It was exciting. If you want bigger, the... bigger is better, right? No, <laughs> small. Actually, smaller pixels are better, but. <laughs> <laughs> More of them. Take that how you I will. Gotcha, I gotcha. Yes. Okay. But uh, this is basically getting the best version of Braid if you want to get Braid again. 2021. Look good. Sounds good. They, yeah, the, it did look good. I think the most interesting thing about Braid, other than the game itself, is they have a gazillion different commentary tracks. So basically yes. all the developers and designers and who Told knows what. Told you how they did things, their yep. thought process, how they... Well, well, I don't know what they're all going to talk gonna about, say, but, but... But there was a lot in there, so if you yeah, like a lot was, of commentary it was tracks... It was implied that, you know, if you want to know how to make a game, you should get this game and listen to all the commentary, so if you, lots of information. If it's not a ton of bitching, then they're lying. That's all <laughs> I was going to say. Anytime you're going to make anything in the real world, there's not a lot of bitching. Eh. Yeah, yeah. Then they rolled into Pathless, The Pathless, uh, mm -hmm. for PS5. Now, this one had a journey-esque look to it to a degree yes kind of the f a f flow yeah so they the you basically um you're an shoot. archer you're an archer but you don't need to aim no they were saying aiming is not the important thing a timing is the important thing because it's a hunter uh, they say it, so it takes place in a, in a forested area or whatever but they said the hun hunter huntress it's a female character uh is, can bound through the world and the way you pick up speed is you're going to be shooting, shooting these floating targets shooting or floating these floating somethings. targets yeah. that take you so they said it's not about you don't aim down aim. sights yeah it's not like you've got a bow and arrow it's, that it's, you would it's your timing do. All right. So what I would say is they showed a long demo. And what I liked, whether you are interested in a game like this or not, it showed you what you're going to get. It showed you the gameplay yes. in, a, in a long, drawn-out way, uh, in an excellent way. So mm -hmm. you have no preconceptions of what this game might be. 
Right. Um, and I appreciated that. I thought it was pretty exciting. Um, I don't know what the price is, and that'll, uh, with any kind of indie game, that'll well, always we, help yeah. make that decision. But it's coming holiday 2020 for the PS5. Looks interesting probably to PS4. me. Probably PS4. Most of these games are probably going to be cross-gen, I would think, that we're Most seeing likely. some of them. Most likely. And then we went into Spelunky 2. Oh. Now, there were a lot of people that seemed excited about Spelunky 2. I, myself, I think, dabbled in Spelunky and didn't like it. But what made it, what was clear to me was this game is trying to kill you in a thousand different ways. That's that's <laughs> what I got from what they showed. When, when I watched it, I thought it looked fun the environment um but yes i, I was watching and i go oh there's a lot of death there's in my future if i'm playing this game yeah as you said everything is out to kill you but it seems like there's a lot of variety in how you can go through levels and hmm? so that's september 15th and then we get to genshin impact which i didn't understand what i was looking at it's basically anime characters fighting cool bosses and lots of flashy big stuff swords yep always big well it's anime slash big, big slash yeah yeah so uh that comes autumn 2020 but it turns out it's it's uh a mmorpg in a way mm -hmm. you, you it's free to play okay Ooh, let me just price point. let me just put it that way there's my price point i will try this <laughs> it's free to play so uh when it comes out i'll let you know <laughs> what it's like because it's well free to play. we'll uh come back and revisit yeah. that game but the the trailer was intriguing other people may know more. It may be something that's tied to an anime that I don't watch, so that may be why I don't understand a whole lot of it, but it looks mm -hmm. cool. It had a very Breath of the Wild art style, it, it has but an, much more detail. It has an interesting price point. Yes. <laughs> Microtransaction heaven. Uh, then we went on to Aeon Must Die. Now this one, I don't know what to say, because it was probably the biggest standout to me in terms of that looked amazing, and it looked stylistic and, and crazy and good, and then... After the show, there was a very large controversy coming through on developers that left and said the idea was stolen and that mm -hmm. it's unclear because both sides haven't been heard yet, uh, but that's kind of what we have. So there's a little controversy around this. Yeah, so I want to say I'm still very intrigued and excited, but holding my opinion, depending on what kind of falls As out As to what happens mess. with the controversy, mm -hmm. right? Because then... There's the question of, okay, if, if a developer has controversy and... You can know, you not appreciate the game? Can you not appreciate the game? Should you not get the game? Depending on Should what happens, not... I think you need to make statements with your wallets. I think yeah. that's important. Yeah. So we'll see what yeah. happens. But you need the information first before you Always just... need to be informed before you make jumps to conclusions. Very Next good. game we saw was Anno Mutationen? Mutationen? I think you said it about as good as I could say it. All right. I yeah. I, I don't know. Didn't have much to say about this one. No. Nope. Uh, it was a game. <laughs> and we'll see more <laughs> afterwards. December 2020. Wow, that is some great analytical work right hey, there. I just it's think, a game. I think that tells you the impression <laughs> it gave me. I was like, mm, okay, next game. Get on to the next one. And the next one was Bug Snacks. Yum, <laughs> so yum. Everybody loves Bug Snacks. <laughs> They're throwing a little bit of that. Do you uh, like crunchy bug snacks or squishy bug snacks? What's your... Crunchy outside, squishy inside. You need both. Okay, okay. Um, they had a pizza pterodactyl. That that alone yeah. won the trailer war for me. But So um, if that thing's going to poop on you, what's it pooping on you? A sausage. Sausage. Very clearly sausage. Okay. No vegetarian here. <laughs> It's coming out holiday 2020. We knew that what they showed in Bug Snacks though was actually some more gameplay. It showed mm -hmm. uh, kind of a laser pointer where you guide one creature into a hole and it helped pop out a creature that you were trying to get out. It showed mm -hmm. some traps that you need to time and set up right to capture some yeah, of these little critters. Yeah, and I critters. think they were showing different types of traps. Yeah, Did they? yeah I think so. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, the game looks like there's a game there, which is cool. You, they need a game. But uh, mm -hmm. it was a good showing to show you a little bit more Bug Snacks. And there you go. And after Bug Snacks, what did we run into? But Vader in VR. Vader Immortal. So a Star Wars VR game, which is cool. Get lightsabers, slice things up. You had Force Lightning, so you could... You could yes, yeah. the finger lightning. That's what I was calling finger it. Finger lightning. <laughs> finger looking good. <laughs> so that's uh, another... So uh, they, they showed a good... Uh, some good VR. Good, some good VR support, considering yes. where we are in VR. And yes, that's excellent. 
All right, so after Vader, they showed an expansion called Awe for Control coming out August 27th, 2020. Looks good. Then they roll right into Auto Chess, October 21st, 2020. I looked at that and I was like, what the heck am I looking at? I, I, well, as it was going on, and then is it Auto Chess at the end of it? And I go, that's chess. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. I barely know how to play chess to begin with, so. Yeah, well, that's not real chess. It's Auto Chess. I, I know. Yeah. Uh, then they showed The Pedestrian, which looked like a very interesting platform puzzle game. Mm -hmm. um, again, they showed it for quite a while. They showed you a lot of concepts of how it's going to play. So mm -hmm. there's no question on what this game is going to be like. I think they left uh, questions out there for you as to what's the end goal in this game. So they, to me, I saw, okay, here's a traversal. But the end I goal don't... is getting through to the next puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> You're a stick man. What do you want? <laughs> and then we got Hood Outlaws and Legends for the PS5. I called it in the middle of watching this. It looked like Robin Hood. <laughs> and mm -hmm. then they call it Hood. So they're right on the nose. Um, I don't know if they showed much gameplay here. It looked like a multiplayer style breaking and entering. Are, are we going to be Outlaws or are we going to be Legends? Well, you're going to be both pick? Outlaws and Legends. It's mm -hmm. going to be both. So that's uh, in 2021. Then they showed... Temtem for PS5 in 2021. Now, Temtem is essentially a alternative to Pokemon. Pokemon. And seeing as how we are not Nintendo uh, when you're doing a Sony conference, having a game that looks like Pokemon, plays like Pokemon, in some cases seeing reviews that it was much better than the most recent Pokemon, that's yeah. exciting because you get an alternative to play that yeah. type of game well, on a different Well, you know platform. what? They're, they're going to have... Right. You get to play it on different platforms. Uh, there's going to be an online world. Um, you get to explore with friends, I guess. Uh, you can collect creatures, of course, and battle yep, friends. Pokemon. So. so it's Pokemon. Pokemon. Yeah. And then they finished up with Godfall. Uh, a long 10-minute segment on Godfall, which I, I'm a little... Good and bad. I'm torn by because I think uh, the trailers that they had previously piqued my interest, and the gameplay was in super quick cuts. Mm -hmm. This one had... Um, Still not great long segments of gameplay, but what they showed left me a little wanting. It looked like maybe beginner areas. They didn't talk about yes. they didn't talk about complexity. They talked about like you can hit four light attacks and then finish with a heavy attack. And I'm like, that's one of the most basic combos you can get. You know, you're mm -hmm. talking about melee and you talk about skill. Then they showed a final or a boss fight, maybe mini boss fight. We have no idea. The guy seemed to get his ass kicked. And the only <laughs> damage he seemed to do is with the super three different times. So, you know, for me, if you're doing that kind of stuff, you need to come at it with a much better showing. Make sure that your fight with the boss is a little more substantial, a little more skillful. So Shows things off a little well, better. All I'll say is I was excited about Godfall. Now my excitement has reduced a bit. It doesn't mean it's gone. I'm waiting to see more. Maybe they just didn't put a good package together trying to show information, and mm -hmm. it was a very dry presentation. When you see all their other trailers, there's, like, rap battles and <laughs> hard rock, and, you know, you're trying to present a, a, a kind of feel for the game. And then you're like, oh, look, if you hit the square a couple of times and then you hit a heavy attack, you do a spin attack. It's like, that's not how you show off this kind of game. Mm -hmm. So. But I, I have to agree because when I got done watching it, I felt like I had seen that stuff already that it wasn't really new. And I don't know if I'm th I think that part of that is uh, they repeated walking through the same part of the game twice within that 10 minutes. So that could have added to that feeling for me it just needed if you watch it and you shouldn't because we did it so you don't have to <laughs> if you watch it you'll see that it, it doesn't feel great um in terms of what they showed the the gameplay may be great they didn't show any three-player co-op and we know that's in there that mm -hmm. can make the fights very exciting yeah. how do the enemies scale uh, the other thing that just bothered me slightly and i'll, I'll just get that out there is the enemies didn't seem to react as strongly as i wanted them to to your hits you know, mm -hmm. if this is a melee-based combat, I want to feel that the enemies are getting hit by my my weapons and my hits. So, didn't see that as much. And that was the end of the Sony State of Play. The end. What did you think? I, I think they started off strong, a crash, mm -hmm. and maybe their end with Godfall felt a little flat for me. I agree. By the end, after, you know, 40, 45 minutes, I was going, okay, 
this, this is the end good. We knew there wasn't going to be any huge announcements. I think they showed uh, a lot of good support for PS4 in mm-hmm. the future. This yes. cross-gen transition. There was a lot of good stuff, the things you can still pick up, not only through the end of this year, but into next year. I think that about sums it up. Yep, I think it was a solid 5 out of 10. And that's been the Cliff Notes for Sony's State of Play for August 6th, 2020. We'll endeavor to be a little faster next time. We thank you. And make sure you let us know your favorite part, or least favorite part, of the conference in the comments down below. Thanks, and we'll catch you next time. (laughs) 